Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'd certainly like to thank the gentlewoman from Virginia for taking the initiative to honor such a great man. 1986, Sentinel Scalio was nominated. I was a junior in high school. I'm not sure it really resonated with me at the time, what the next 30 years would entail. I believe it's safe to say that not only is he one of the strongest conservative voices of our day, but could be from all time. I think of his life, and I think of the example that he left for all of us, whether in politics or out. It's one thing to be conservative. It's another thing to be effective. He showed with his life that he did not have to compromise his principles or his values to be effective. When I look at his peers around him, Judge Ginsburg many times talks about the friendship and the relationship that he had with him. It was genuine. Justice Kagan took her hunting, taught her how to hunt, killed her first big deer, first of any kind, there with Justice Scalia at her side. See, what does that tell me? It tells me something that we need to remember, that you can connect with people, you can hold your values, but you can have a genuine love for your fellow man. There's much to be said about Antonin Scalia's faith. Obviously, he lived it. But he lived it in a way that it set an example for all of us. Yes, we get frustrated, and it's okay to be angry sometimes vertically, but never horizontally to our coworkers, our friends, our neighbors, and family. He set the mark. He set it high. Someone that could work in arguably the toughest environment in the world, gain the respect of his political arch rivals. For that, I will thank him. Tonight, I honor him for showing us how to be both conservative and to be effective. Thank you. I yield back my time. I thank the gentleman for his remarks. And